What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next example dealing with Le Hopital's rules. So we got this limit here as x approaches infinity of the square root of 3x squared minus five over the square root of 2x squared plus three. And just to give a heads up, this is actually an example of a limit that's going to be in indeterminate form. However, it's an example where Le Hopital's rule is actually not going to work. So, so far we've been covering limits where they're in indeterminate form and then we can apply Le Hopital's rule and then we can get the actual limit. This is an example where Le Hopital's rule won't work and we're going to have to use some kind of other strategy. And notice that this is a limit at infinity. So we're going to use the strategies from before, but first I'm going to try to apply Le Hopital's rule and then show you why it doesn't work. First off, notice that if we did a direct substitution here, if we subbed in um, infinity for x, notice that we would get infinity over infinity because we would end up having the square root of three times infinity squared, the minus five would be irrelevant. And then this would just end up being infinity itself. The square root of a really big number is going to be a really big number still. So same thing with the denominator. So notice that it's in that indeterminate form. So let's try to apply La Hopital's rule to start. So we'll have the limit as x approaches infinity. What we got to do is we got to take the derivative of the numerator. So I'm going to do these separately on the side here. So if we got 3x squared minus 5 to the power of a half. Taking the derivative of this, what we do is chain rule, bring the one half down, three x squared minus five, subtract one, and then we got six x like that. And then this two and this six x cancel out. So this here, if we put in a nice form, it would end up being three x over the square root of three x squared minus five, right? This negative one half we break down. Okay, so this here ends up being the derivative for that. So that's going to be the numerator right there. So we're going to have 3x over the square root of 3x squared minus 5. That's the derivative of the numerator. And then we take the derivative of the denominator. So we're going to apply the same process, the chain rule. So we would have 2x squared plus 3. This is going to be to the power of a half. Bring the one half down, subtract one from the exponent, and then multiply it by four x. Notice the four x over two, that simplifies to two x. So this would simplify to two x over the square root of two x squared plus three. When we bring that negative a half down, it becomes a positive a half, bring that square root back. So this here would be the derivative for the denominator. So we would end up with 2x over the square root of 2x squared plus 3. Okay, so now what's going to happen, let's try to simplify this. Notice we got a fraction divided by another fraction. So we would end up with the limit as x approaches infinity. Uh, so we would have that first fraction, let's rewrite it, times the reciprocal of this fraction, the square root of 2x squared plus 3 over 2x. So now what we can do from here is simplify these. So notice these x's will cancel out. The 3 over 2 won't simplify. So if we combine these, if we multiply the numerators and denominators here, we would end up with the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 square root of 2x squared plus 3 over 2 times the square root of 3x squared minus 5. Right, so that's what it simplifies to when we apply Le Hopital's rule. So notice that it's not really making our expression any more simple to deal with, right? In fact, it maybe even made it more complex because now we got this 3 and 2 in front, which doesn't make a huge difference. We can just factor that out and then just work with this. But again, it's still, if we do a direct substitution here, we're going to end up with three times infinity over two times infinity, which is still going to be infinity over infinity. It's still going to be in indeterminate form. Okay, so that's an example of a limit where it's in indeterminate form and applying Le Hopital's rule, it's not really going to get you anywhere. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I mentioned this in the overview video, Le Hopital's rule just because something's in indeterminate form 
doesn't mean it's always going to work. So we got to use a different strategy here. And if you remember from limits at infinity, what we can do here is we can take, there's different methods to solve this, by the way. If you remember from those lecture videos, if you don't remember how to do these limits, highly recommend you go over those examples. I have a bunch. But in this particular case, what we can do is we can rewrite that expression in the numerator. We could factor out an x squared, so we'd have 3 minus 5 over x squared, like that, over, we could factor out an x squared here, and we'd have 2 plus 3 over x squared, like that. And then we can simplify this further. So notice these are two expressions that are multiplying under a square root, so we could split those up in the square root. Same thing here. And now notice those cancel out. And now what we can do is we can uh, sub in this x value of infinity because notice how 5 over infinity squared, that's going to go towards 0. And 3 over infinity squared, that's going to go towards 0 as well. So what we would end up having as a final answer is the square root of 3 over the square root of 2, like that. Or this answer could be in this format. Or you can rationalize it. So you'd have uh, multiply by root 2 over root 2. So you could end up having uh, root 6 over 2. Right? So either this, this this, they're all the same thing. If you plug all those in your calculator, you get the same decimal. Okay, so couldn't use La Hoppe-Tolles rule even though it was in indeterminate form. We had to use the strategies that we covered in the limits at infinity section.